This time, I'll be introducing a two-day trip to Hakone. This plan is designed to avoid crowds as much as possible and efficiently visit the major attractions. Please watch this video to grasp the destination's feel and approximate route. Before I proceed with the sightseeing guide, let me give you some basic information about Hakone. There are primarily two main ways to get to Hakone. You can take the Shinkansen from Tokyo Station, which takes about 30 minutes, and then transfer to a local train at Odawara for about 15 minutes to reach Hakone. Alternatively, you can start your journey from Shinjuku Station, taking the Odaki Romanskar Express train, which takes approximately 90 minutes to get to Hakone. Additionally, it is possible to disembark at Mishima Station by Shinkansen, visit the Mishima Skywalk, and then proceed to Hakone by bus. This diagram simplifies Hakone, where various transport options aid sightseeing. The Hakone Free Pass is a great deal for Hakone sightseeing. It provides unlimited access to trains, buses, ropeways, and more as shown in the diagram, with only a few exceptions. A one-way bus ticket costs 1,000 yen, the ropeway is 1,500 yen, and there are museum discounts. It's a must-have. Tickets available online, machines, Shinjuku South Exit Desk. From Shinjuku Station, the ticket includes a ride but not the seat reservation for the Limited Express, which you should buy separately. The price is appealing, but the best part is not having to deal with cash when using transportation. On the first day, I'll take a bus to Togendai, then use the ropeway to visit all Kudani and the museums. On the second day, I'll head to Motohakone to explore shrines, take a sightseeing boat, and visit the zoo. I have accommodations in Hakone Yamoto, so you you can use each day's plan separately. Now, let's get started. Hakone Yamoto Station, I've arrived. Start at the gate's baggage storage. They can deliver to the inn until 12.30. Sending from inn to station also an option. Now, I take a bus from stop number 3 to get to Togendai, and then head to the ropeway boarding area. During peak times, this is the quickest way to get to Oakudani. For your reference. From bus stop number 1, it takes about 40 minutes to reach Oakudani. However, the free pass cannot be used, and there may be significant delays due to traffic. From bus stop number 2, you can visit Hakone Shrine and then take the Hakone sightseeing boat to head to Togendai. This route is recommended for day trippers, and I will introduce it on another occasion. When I got off the bus, I was right in front of the Togendai ropeway station. This gondola can accommodate up to 18 people at most. It takes about 30 minutes to reach Oakudani, and you can enjoy a leisurely ride while gazing at Lake Oshinoko. The autumn foliage season is incredibly beautiful. By the way, on cloudy days, you won't be able to see anything at all. Upon reaching Oakudani, you'll be greeted by a breathtaking view right in front of you. When you come here, let's have some black eggs. They're only sold here. The eggs turn black due to iron sulfide when boiled in the hot spring pool at around 80 degrees Celsius for about 60 minutes. Then, they are steamed at around 100 degrees Celsius. These eggs, richer in umami, are believed to extend lifespan by 7 years when consumed. This is vanilla-flavored soft-serve ice cream, and the color comes from bamboo charcoal. If you're wearing a white t-shirt, be careful not to spill it on yourself. Oakudani currently offer Japanese language guidance only, but they have an exclusive online reservation option for tours. You can visit the Black Egg Hot Spring Pools and see shelters used during volcanic eruptions. After visiting Oakudani, you can head to the Art Museum area. First, let's travel from Oakudani Station to Soenzan Station, which takes approximately 15 minutes by ropeway. While this ropeway route won't offer views of Lake Oshinoko, you'll get to observe the volcanic crater area. At Soenzan Station, there's an observation deck, and some seats even have foot baths. In cafes, smoothies topped with cotton candy are popular for Instagram-worthy photos. From Soenzan Station, you'll board the Hakone cable car to reach the art museum area. The cable car departs approximately every 15 minutes, but be mindful that there could be a 26-minute gap between rides depending on the time of day. I'm at the Hakone Museum of Art, right in front of Koen Kami Station. The museum's garden is designated as a national scenic spot, with around 130 types of moss and 220 maple trees, offering stunning views throughout the seasons. It was a long weekend, but I was lucky to visit during a less crowded time. This is a tea room where you can enjoy kuzu yokan, a type of sweet made from kudzu starch, and matcha tea. Even if you're not a fan of sweet bean paste, you'll find these treats refreshing. The tables are made of Wajima lacquerware plywood, and you can take beautiful, mirror-like photos with your mobile phone. 
About a three-minute walk from the Hakone Museum of Art, you'll arrive at Gora Park. If you have the Hakone Free Pass, admission is free. You can enter from the west gate and explore the park, exiting from the main gate. The park has an elevation difference of 40 meters, so it might be a bit challenging if you take the reverse route. In Gora Park, you'll find facilities like restaurants, cafes, and hands-on workshops for ceramics and glass crafts. A thorough visit can take over an hour, but if you're just taking photos and strolling from top to bottom, it can be done in 15 to 20 minutes. I decided to have lunch at a Japanese set meal restaurant right in front of the main gate of Gora Park. Ordered katsudon and tororo soba. It's an interesting way to eat soba by dipping it in soba broth and then in the grated yam, known as tororo. From there, it's about a 12 to 15 minute walk to reach the Hakone Open Air Museum. The path is downhill, so it's not too strenuous. Along the way to the museum, you'll come across various dining facilities. Online tickets help skip lines. I waited 5 minutes free pass gets 200 yen off. I spent I spent about 90 minutes at the cafe, having a quick tea and enjoying the atmosphere. The 70,000 square meters garden features around 120 sculptures, including works by world-famous artists like Rodin and more. Contemporary art enthusiasts can have fun guessing titles and taking diverse photos. Climbing up this tower of happiness allows you to enjoy views of the Hakone Mountains. I'll be taking the train again to return to Hakone Yamoto Station. The train around 1600 hours is expected to be crowded. I decided to get off at Town Osawa Station, one station before Hakone Yamoto. At this station, there's a small shrine on the platform called Zeniari Benton. Since I had about 12 minutes until the next train, I decided to do a little sightseeing. There's a basin here where you can wash coins, and it's believed that using these washed coins promptly will bring good fortune. <laughs> now that we're back at Hakone Yamoto Station, I've made reservations for accommodations around the station. Let's take a brief stroll around Hakone Town. The Hakone Orange Bus is convenient for getting to Ryokans around the station. It runs approximately every 30 minutes to 1 hour, and the fare is just 100 yen per ride. Additionally, on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, there are buses available in the 17 colon OOS. The souvenir shops in the hot spring town close between 5.30 pm and 6 pm. If you happen to get a bit hungry around this time, you could try some street food. Personally, I didn't eat because I didn't want to spoil my appetite for dinner. About a 15-minute walk from Yamoto Station, you'll find a ryokan called Tensei N. Inside, there are waterfalls and shrines to explore. You can visit for free between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. This time, I chose a restaurant where I can enjoy beef hot pot by the riverside for dinner. Most dining establishments around Hakone Yamoto Station close after 6.30 p.m., but this restaurant accepts reservations until 7 p.m. They even provide katatsu, heated tables, during the winter months. That's a lovely way to start before raising a toast. Enjoy your mountain yam and soy milk soup as a gentle treat for your stomach. I'm going to enjoy a coarse meal with a focus on beef. This is the appetizer. The presentation is stylish, and the taste is delicious. This is beef sashimi. It includes unusual cuts such as beef tongue and the rare parts near the hooves. It's served with soy foam for a light and fluffy texture. Enjoy dipping it in the soy foam for a unique dining experience. And then, there's the beef hot pot. The restaurant staff will prepare it for you. You mix the egg and grated yam together. Dipping it in the grated yam is the style of this restaurant. I heard that the yam is sourced from their own farm. Since it's a beef hot pot and not sukiyaki, you simmer the meat in the sauce instead of grilling it. The sauce is intense in flavor, so the presence of grated yam mellows it out, bringing out the richness of the meat's flavor. I found the parquetry toothpick holder interesting, so I took a picture of it. This time, the course costs approximately 14,000 yen per person. The taste and service were excellent, so I highly recommend giving it a try. On the next day, I toured the Lake Ashinoko area. To get there, I took a bus from bus stop number 2. It was about a 30 to 40 minute ride from Hakone Motor Station. From the bus stop to the shrine, you'll walk along the Lake Ashi Road for about 10 minutes. Before you explore the shrine grounds, don't forget to take a memorable photo at the Peace Tori Gate. Before entering the shrine grounds, let's take a photo at the Peace Tori. 
It's a popular spot, even on weekdays, so I recommend going early in the morning. Depending on the time, you might have to wait for about an hour for photos, but as of around 9.45 am, the line is about 50 meters long. This Tory gate was built in 1952 to commemorate the ceremony for proclamation of Crown Prince and the signing of the San Francisco Peace Treaty. When you ride a sightseeing boat and pass through the gate, you can see the word peace on it. Hakone Shrine is famous as a power spot where you can boost various aspects of your luck, including matchmaking, health, and career success. The amulets adorned with cedar embroidery are popular as talismans for victory. In Hakone, there are three shrines, Hakone Shrine, Hakone Motomiya, and Kuzuryu Shrine Hongu. It is said that your spiritual power can be further enhanced by visiting all three of these shrines. I'll explain this shrine tour in more detail later, but it's a popular route for sightseeing in Hakone. One of the powerful shrines, Kuzuryu Shrine Shingu, is located right next to Hakone Shrine. It is said that drinking the Dragon God's water here cleanses impurities, and it is also popular for its benefits in love life. Don't forget to take a look at the dragon illustration on the shrine's ceiling. There is a delicious bakery in front of the sightseeing boat pier. I recommend having breakfast or an early lunch here. There are about 10 foot bath seats at the entrance, and the cafe seats are also wonderful. This time, I will eat outside while enjoying the view of Lake Ashi. I had to wait for about 15 minutes to purchase the bread on that day. It seems like it was a busy time. The most popular item is the curry bread made with rice flour. It has a crispy outer coating. It's loaded with cream, and the bread itself is really soft and fluffy. The bread here is delicious with creative touches, so if you're okay with a little weight, definitely give it a try. Instead of taking the sightseeing boat from here, this time I opted for a leisurely 1km walk, which takes about 15 minutes, along the cedar-lined avenue. I'll be boarding the sightseeing boat from Hakone Sekiso port. Along the way, you'll also come across Hakone Anchi Park. This park is famous for its seasonal flowers and the stunning panoramic view of Lake Ishinoko and Mount Fuji. Although it involves quite a bit of walking, you can explore it in about an hour. Around 400 years ago, officials had to travel between Tokyo and Kyoto once a year to govern regions and distribute funds. This road was the important road, known as Takedo, used during that time. In Hakone, there was an office responsible for inspecting and regulating the entry and baggage of such travelers. It was known as Hakone Checkpoint, and today it has been turned into a historical museum. Even if you don't go inside the museum, you can still take photos of the gate. There are several dining options at the checkpoint. The Marquetry Art Museum offers manufacturing process tours and hands-on crafting experiences. Without the hands-on experience, it takes about 20 minutes for a visit. You'll take the Lake Ashi sightseeing boat to reach the Hakone Inn area. Note that the pirate ship isn't available here, and your free pass won't work. The boat departs at 12.50, arriving at Hakone Inn in about 30 minutes. There's an earlier departure at 12.05 as well. It may have a bit of a vintage charm, but personally, I recommend this one if you plan to take a sightseeing boat. While it doesn't go to Oakadani's ropeway station, it's not too crowded, and you can capture great photos with the pirate ship and the Tori Gate at Hakone Shrine. At the top of the hill is the ropeway station. The red building is a hotel, and the azalea garden is stunning. I've arrived at Hakone Inn. Luckily, I had the chance to see a waterland amphibious bus known as the Ninja Bus. This area is home to two of the three power spot shrines, as well as an aquarium and a small zoo. If you're looking to enjoy a delicious meal in Hakone for lunch, both the Hakone Prince Hotel's buffet and the Japanese or French restaurants with a view of Lake Ashi are excellent choices. On this visit to Hakone Inn, I will be heading to the main shrine of Kuzuryu Shrine Hongu. Renting a bicycle or taking a motorboat is a good option. To save money, I walked for about 15 minutes one way. It wasn't uphill, but the round trip got a bit tiring. Along the way, I encountered a Segway tour. This shrine is located within Kuzuryu Forest on its premises. It costs 600 yen to enter the grounds. The shrine is very quiet, and there weren't too many visitors. The story behind the name Kuzuryu dates back to the Nara period when a poisonous dragon with nine heads living in Lake Ishinoko caused storms and brought suffering to the villagers. A high priest defeated the dragon, which later repented and became a dragon deity, and that's how the shrine originated. You can also use the motorboat for a one-way trip at a cost of 1,500 yen. The motorboat ride takes about 7 minutes. They pick you up at the pier by phone, and you can get up close to the Tori Gate.
I've returned to Hakone An's entrance. From here, you can also take the ropeway to visit one of the power spots, Hakone Motomiya. However, I'm heading to the zoo, which is what I wanted to see the most. You can re-enter this place. When buying tickets, especially on busy days, make sure to get a white card like admission pass. Without it, you can't join the interactive corner. Be cautious, as there may not be clear instructions, and you might miss it if you're not aware. Here, you can interact with small animals. I headed back to Hakone Yamoto Station. There are primarily three ways to get there. For Route 1, you can reach Hakone Yamoto directly, but it goes through Okudani, so there's a chance of traffic, which might extend the usual one-hour travel time to two hours. For Route 3, the bus stop is at Prince Hotel. Free bus to Motorakon, then transfer to Hakone Yamoto bus. Fastest if schedules align. This time, I used Route 2, transferring buses at Togendai and traveling via Sengakuhara. I encountered a 20-minute delay to Yamoto due to traffic congestion. I originally planned to take the 1715 train, but I didn't have time to buy souvenirs at the station, so I changed the time. In situations like this, having an online ticket is convenient because you can easily make changes. I got off before Hakone Yamoto station and strolled through the hot spring town while shopping for souvenirs. The souvenir shops in the hot spring town close between 5.30 pm and 6 pm. Since there is time before the train departure, I will have an early dinner. This is a recommended pizza restaurant. They have many foreign staff, and it's well known for its delicious food. This time, I decided to try something local, so I went for a Yuba Donburi. Here's the Genkotsu age, which is made from ground fish. Yuba Donburi is made by pouring hot Yuba, tofu skin, and beaten eggs over rice. The surroundings have become completely dark now. Inside the station, there are cafes and a souvenir shop. It's convenient if you've sent your luggage from your accommodation to the station before departure. Now, if you take the 1845 train, you'll arrive in Shinjuku at 2010, concluding your Hakone journey. I've visited all the places I wanted to this time. Enjoy a wonderful journey, taking into account your energy and preferences. Thank you for watching.